Hi guys, today I want to show you how to cut your corms in order to propagate them. And these are gladiolus corms, but this will work with any type of corm or bulb, even tulips, garlic, anything like that. So I'm going to show you how to do it, and you can actually make one corm into four plants. I usually just make them into one, into two plants, and that's good enough for me, but you will get blooms in the first year if you have a big enough corm. This is really easy to do. You're just going to need a sharp kitchen knife and we're basically going to be cutting these in half vertically and I like to turn them on their side because it's much easier to cut into without damaging the bud that's on the top of the corm. The basil plate is on the bottom of the corm and that's where all the roots come out of so you need to make sure that you're cutting that right in half and that you've got plenty of basil plate on both pieces. If your corm is big enough, you can actually cut these into quarters evenly as well and get four plants from one corm. However, just keep in mind, the more you cut this down, the fewer chances you're going to get of having blooms in the first year. So these pieces may not bloom for me until next year. Also, I want to note that you need to make sure you're cutting right in the middle on the top as well as the bottom because the top has the bud and the new forming corm for next year. So you need to have a piece of that in every piece that you cut off of your corm. The yellow fleshy part of the corm that you're seeing is actually the plant that's going to form for this year. That's all the energy it's stored for the plant to bloom this year. In the middle, you'll see kind of a wider area. Sometimes you'll see a more fleshy white area at the top middle. That's going to be your corm for next year. If you're not seeing that wider fleshy area in the middle top, don't worry about it. It just means you've got a smaller corm and it hasn't started forming its second corm for the, for the next year. You also want to make sure that you're leaving the tunic on the corm. That's that papery husk that's on the outside of the corm. The tunic protects the corm from water loss and also from insects. So we want to keep as much of that on there as we can. Now if you don't want to cut your corms in half and you don't feel confident in propagating this way, there is another way to stimulate the corms to get them to, to form more cormals. And the cormals are basically mini corms that form inside the bulb and become new plants, but they take two to three years to bloom. Now you can make your corm produce more of those by scoring the corm with your knife. So you'll make shallow cuts on the sides of the corm with your knife, and that will stimulate the corm and make it form more cormals. So here's an example of some cormals that are in this corm. You can see the one at the top here. That's called a lateral bud, and that will become its own corm as well. And the larger your corm is, the more lateral buds and cormals you'll get. So it's really important to plant your gladiolas in full sun where they can get sun all day long because they'll use that energy to create more cormals and more lateral buds. And that's how the plant self-propagates and that's how you get lots of gladiolas for free. Before we plant these, we want to treat them with the fungicide, and I'm using milk. This is 50% milk, 50% water, so one part milk, one part water. And milk is known to work better than commercial fungicides. So we're going to soak these for about 15 minutes. If you use one part milk and five parts water, you can use this as a fungicide on other plants to treat powdery mildew and black spot, any fungus really, and it's a great preventative as well. It's also proven to strengthen the immune system of the plant. If you don't want to use a fungicide, you could just simply lay the corms out to dry and callus over, and that'll keep them from rotting in the ground. Um, however, I recommend doing both, so soaking the milk for 15 minutes and then leaving them out to dry. Like any other corm, you're going to plant these four inches deep and about eight inches apart if you're wanting them to spread naturally. If you think you're going to be digging these up and you want them densely planted, you can plant them four inches apart. Otherwise, if you're leaving them in the soil to overwinter, you want to plant them eight inches apart so that they could spread. You also want to make sure that you're planting these pointy side up that goes for all the corms that you've cut. So make sure your basil plate is face down and your uh, pointed bud is pointing up to the sky. So we have uh, drifts of gladiolas everywhere on our property. This is just one that I planted last year that came back and it bloomed beautifully for me last year. 
Uh, don't mind the ugly wall behind it. This is going to end up being um, stalls for, I don't know, goats or alpacas or whatever Garrett's planning on getting. Um, so that's going to come down soon. So I know it's kind of ugly. But I decided I wanted to show you guys where uh, we have gladiolas planted. So we're going to take a walk around the property and I'm going to show you all the spaces where I'm growing gladiolas. So here is the drift that we just planted um, not that long ago. I did a video on it. It was like 140 gladiola corms that we planted. And it's doing really, really well. They've all come up and they are doing really good. So I'm about to plant another drift after I filmed the first part of this video, which is showing you how to propagate your gladiolus corms. Here's a little wild drift that we did, and it's so grown up with weeds, but um, it's totally fine. These bloomed really well for us last year. We planted these last year also, and I've got a spirea bush right here, but the weeds are like so crazy. The dewberries and everything, so I need to clean this area out, but they're so like hardy these plants because they will grow through weeds they don't care <laughs> I also have some gladiolas coming up in here they're kind of mixed in with the irises right now and it's covered in weeds again um, but once we start cutting the grass back and do a little bit of weed control out here it'll look so much better I also have some over here and I actually dug all of, the, I used to have a drift right here and I dug them all up and planted them somewhere else. And these are what came up from cormlets, or cormels, sorry. Um, so you see they're really tall because they're growing through my uh, dewberry bushes here and honeysuckle, but they do just fine. They find the sun without any issues. Out here in the market garden, I also have a bunch of gladiolas planted, and these never get watered. They just do so well, they're so hardy. And I've got them at the end of each aisle out here. I don't know if you can see them all, but they go all the way down. And they get full sun all day long. And you'll notice that these, um, I only planted, I think about four on each end, and there's way more than four now because they're getting full sun all day long, so they're self-propagating like crazy because they have so much energy to store. Sorry, all this drip tape is in the way, but you can see there's a bunch here. So, like I said previously, if you plant these in full sun, where they get sun all day long, they will spread like crazy because their main bulb will be have too much energy stored and so they'll start forming cormlets to store more energy and create more plants. If you'd like to know more about planting and storing gladiolus corms, I do have a link in the description to a video that I did previously and I also have a gladiolus playlist. Here is just a peek at some of the gladiolas from my garden. All right, guys, that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you get lots of blooms this coming year, and we'll see you tomorrow.